Okay, so um, this is the 10 pound pitcher that was thrown in three sections. It's 18 and a half inches tall. It's a little less than leather hard. And the previous video I showed pulling the spout and darting. Now I'm going to um, put a foot on it and pull a handle. So um, here we go. I have a lug of clay and I kind of just guess at how much I want for the foot. I'm gonna give this foot some texture and some lift. And I'm thinking that's probably about right for this pot. I don't like really huge um, lift on a foot, just to accent the form a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is throw the foot and I need to measure the bottom of my pot with my calipers so I know the distance of the ring for the foot I'm gonna throw. And I'm gonna go just a little bit further, you know, like in total, maybe an eighth of an inch the, across the diameter of this circle because I want the foot to have a little accent of strength where it's attached. So I've got my measurement. I'm gonna set my pitcher aside and take this little piece of clay and throw the foot. So I've opened this down to the bat and I'm just throwing a ring. And I'm gonna check with my caliper. And that's a little too far, but I'm gonna bring it inward to attach. And you can see this foot is pretty strong. That's more than a half an inch across the top because I want a lot of clay to attach with. And now I'm just gonna slow my wheel down and put a little throwing ring in there to give some edges for the glaze to break across on the bottom of this pot. I've found that it's just a nice added feature to the piece. When you have a 10 pound pot and this pot was thrown finished, you really need a strong substantial foot. So make sure that you use enough clay for the piece. So I'm gonna check my measurement here and I need to bring it out just a tweak. You don't want any torque in this foot when you throw it. The throwing ring needs to be an accent of texture but not putting torque into the foot because it will unwind on you and pop off if you have uh, not executed it well. So that may take some practice, but you can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and score this and I like to score in both directions. And usually for foot attachments, I'll score it even stronger with my trusty cocktail shrimp or oyster fork so that there's nice deep grooves in there. I do not want this foot coming off this pot. That is so depressing. So I'm just gonna take my time and score it well. That could have thrown it out around a little bit. Fortunately, clay has its wonderful memory. So it got a little wider than I want, so I'm just gonna push it in. A little bit more. And there it is. Okay, now I need to torch it just a little bit because it's gonna hold the whole weight of that finished pot. If you haven't worked with a torch before, you're gonna love it. But if you're using plastic bats, you will have to invest in a different form of a bat system. Okay, so now it's got some strength to it. I think it'll hold this pot up. I actually like for it to move a little bit because sometimes I like it when the pot settles down into the foot. It gives it some life for the clay to move, but only a little bit. So I've scored it, I put a little water on there. Now I'm gonna score the pitcher. All the way around. All the way around. Now 
And really, there's no better time than right now to sign your pot. signed it and I'm gonna give just a touch of water to this not much at all just to wake up those clay particles right there and then I'm gonna set it on here a little adjustment and you can see that little eighth of an inch has made that foot strong I'm gonna come right, gravity's working for me now on this attachment, because this pot weighs 10 pounds, or it did originally. Some of the water has dried out of it. But since I use very little water, its weight shouldn't have changed all that much. Okay, so now that's attached. I'm gonna firm up that attachment just a little bit, so that it's kind of the same moisture content, top and bottom. See a little issue right there that I'm just gonna rub out. You can see I have that little bit of overhang that makes this foot strong. Now, the next thing I wanna do is pull a handle. I'm gonna torch this just a little bit so it won't give any way on me while I'm pulling the handle. But I like my pitcher attached to the bat when I pull the handle. Years ago, I mean like back in the 80s, I went to a workshop and Mick Cassens, a potter in England, was pulling handles and he had his pot attached to the bat. And I've been doing that ever since. So now I'm gonna pull this lug and I'm just waking this clay up a little bit. I like to pull handles off the pot. I think it gives them a nice fluid life to them. So here's my blank. I've given it some stretch, but I'm not done. And I'm gonna cut it. And I like to have a lot of clay when I attach a handle. So I have scored up here at the top. I'm gonna touch it with just enough water to wake it up, just enough. And then I'm gonna offer the handle up to the pot. Okay. So when I offer up a handle, I use a lot of the clay. So my fingers are actually about an inch back and I push that clay into the pitcher and then from that back position, move clay up and inward. And you can see that it pushes the clay out and causes that attachment to become a very strong feature. I don't want this handle against this big pot and this strong rim to look weak. So there it is, nicely attached on. You can see that I've got three elements to it, the middle and the two sides. And now this pitcher is attached to that foot and I'm just gonna gently take a little water and start stretching this handle right here on the pot. and I'm tapering it narrower on the outsides and narrower as it goes down. You don't want to over pull this. Remember when you put a handle onto a pitcher, it's wetter than the pitcher, so it's going to shrink. So you don't want to understate it. You want to overstate it a little bit because it's going to shrink to have its perfect negative space. So I've just gently attached it there and now I'm gonna work on its negative space, which is the space right in here. I think one of the critical things for really nice pots is not only the weight of attachments being appropriate for the form, but then what is the space between the pot and the handle? It creates its own visual shape. So I'm gonna work on that. And you have to be careful because sometimes if you don't get your curve right, you'll, it'll dry with a sharp line, a flat line, right in here, and then that can really be upsetting. Okay, so now I'm just gonna attach it on when I think I have it where I like it. And the way I darted this pitcher, it gives this nice little feature right here, and I just take some of that extra clay and actually enhance it even more. Uh, 
those are the little things that some potters forget is that you can add clay. I'm just smoothing it out. I like for my fingers to show there. That makes me happy that you can see that a potter was there. Okay, so that's pretty good negative space in my mind. And I'm gonna let this baby set up but before I do, I'm going to take it off the bat with the cutting wire. So the underside of this foot is unfinished. So I have to take a minute and fix it up. So you can see under there that it's still a little rough. But because I did most of the work on the wheel, I have very little work that I have to do now. So I'm just cleaning up my edge for my wax line, which also gives lift to your pot. I'm cleaning up the edge on the inside. Take the time to clean up your pots. Make excellent pots so that every element of them is refined and done with wonderful craftsmanship. Now I'm just compressing that join a little bit in there if I feel like I've got a problem with it, sometimes I'll add a little coil, but this time it doesn't need it. And so I've got this pot all cleaned up. The underside is as nice as the outside. And there it is. Let me scrape this off right here and we'll take a look at her. There she is. Okay, now you try.